Welcome to this webinar on misleading and deceptive conduct under the Manufactured Homes Residential Parks Act and Retirement Villages Act in Queensland. My name is Gillian and I'm a project worker with the Queensland Retirement Village and Park Advice Service, or CURFAS for short, which is a service located within Caxton Legal Centre, a community legal centre in South Brisbane. I would like to start with acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which Caxton Legal Centre is located, the Yagara and the Turrbal people, and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. This webinar is for residents in retirement villages and homeowners of manufactured homes in residential parks in Queensland. The webinar contains general information, not legal advice. If you need legal advice, please contact Curve Pass directly to discuss your matter. I'll provide an introduction to Curve Pass and guidance on misleading and deceptive conduct under the Manufactured Homes Residential Parks Act and Retirement Villages Act in Queensland, and also provide some information about other law which may be relevant. The Queensland Retirement Village and Park Advice Service provides specialist advice and information to residents and prospective residents of retirement villages and manufactured home parks. It is a free statewide service funded by the Queensland Government Department of Housing and Public Works. Moving into a manufactured home park or retirement village is a major financial decision. Residents may have sold a large asset, a home or land or a unit to buy into these retirement living options. For many, the transition is smooth and they enjoy the supportive community lifestyle this move brings. However, sometimes things do not go to plan. This webinar will provide some legal information about some of the laws which might apply in Queensland when you feel you have been misled about your new home in a manufactured home park or retirement village. Keep in mind that the webinar does not contain an exhaustive list of the laws which could be relevant and it's always a good idea to get legal advice specific to your circumstances. Turning first to manufactured homes, what are some of the issues which might arise? Some examples are, homeowners may consider that the manufactured home they purchased is not to the standard they expected in relation to the construction of the home. It could be that the salesperson has made a statement, the marketing material, or the purchase contract contained a statement about an aspect of the home or an aspect of the facilities or park amenities, which was wrong or misleading. Also, it could be that the homeowner was not told about an important issue about the home or park, which would have affected their decision to move in, or there was a silence. So silence in some circumstances can amount to misleading or deceptive conduct. Conduct is not limited to words or positive representations. But whether silence does constitute misleading or deceptive conduct always depends on the circumstances of the particular matter. For manufactured homes, it's important to recall that there are two separate agreements. The first is the site agreement, which allows you to position your manufactured home on the site in the park and is formed with the park owner. And the second is the contract to purchase the manufactured home. The Manufactured Homes Residential Parks Act in Queensland is mostly concerned with the rights and obligations of park owner and homeowner under the site agreement. However, there are some references to the contract to purchase the manufactured home in, that, in the Act. The person or entity which sold you the manufactured home may be different to the park owner. What this means is that you cannot pursue the park owner for issues which relate to the purchase contract in many circumstances. 
What does the manufactured homes residential park say about misleading and deceptive conduct? Section 95 sets out that the park owner for a residential park must not engage in conduct that is fraudulent or misleading in the operation of the park or in acting as a homeowner's agent to sell or to negotiate the sale of a manufactured home. So where the issue relates to the purchase contract, this section might be relevant. Section 96 sets out that a park owner must not engage in harassment or unconscionable conduct. Section 95 and 96 of the Act are penalty provisions. This means that fines can be imposed on the park owner if they are found to have breached these sections of the Act and they are prosecuted for that breach. However, the sections do not provide grounds to seek compensation or some other remedy from the park owner if you have suffered a loss as a result of the conduct. Section 72, subsection 1C, also sets out that homeowners can apply for a rent reduction if communal facilities or services described in advertising or in a document made available to the homeowner before they move in have not been made available. The three-step dispute resolution process must be followed when seeking a rent reduction from the park owner. Turning to other law which might be relevant for manufactured homes. If you purchase the home from a builder, developer or park owner and the issue relates to the purchase contract for the manufactured home, the Australian consumer law may be relevant. The Australian Consumer Law is part of the Competition and Consumer Act 2010, and this is Commonwealth legislation that applies throughout Australia. The Australian Consumer Law contains protections against misleading and deceptive conduct or conduct which is likely to mislead or deceive in trade and commerce and unconscionable conduct. The ACL also contains guarantees regarding the quality of the goods purchased. The ACO allows consumers to claim for the loss or damage they experience as a result of the breaches of the protections and guarantees in the ACO. It can also be possible to claim a full refund for goods in relation to the guarantee of regarding acceptable quality. The remedies available for a breach of the protections and guarantees in the ACO will vary depending on how severe the failure of the goods is and what the problem is. If you purchase the home from another homeowner who was a private individual, your options will be more limited. The ACL will generally not apply to this type of transaction, but you will still have some protections under contract law. Contract law will also apply to purchase agreements with a builder, developer, or the park owner. Remedies under contract law can include payment of damages, an order that a party do something or stop doing something, and in some cases, undoing the contract, also known as rescission. There could be other ways to resolve issues in relation to the construction of your manufactured home. For example, some manufactured homes may fall within the Queensland Home Warranty Scheme. This is administered by the Queensland Building and Construction Commission, the QBCC, which is the regulator of the building industry in Queensland. You can find more information about the scheme on the QBCC website. Choosing how to address a problem with your manufactured home, which involves being misled, may be complicated as one or more laws may be applicable, so you will have to choose. Certain types of actions must be commenced in the Queensland Civil and Administrative Tribunal, QCAT, and others should only be commenced in the Magistrates Court of Queensland, Queensland District Court or Queensland Supreme Court. In addition, certain actions in QCAT, including consumer trader disputes, have a limit on the amount of money which can be awarded. Likewise, the Magistrates Court in Queensland also has a jurisdictional monetary limit. 
Given the high purchase price of some manufactured homes, it's very important that you commence your action in the right jurisdiction with the appropriate powers. So the court you seek relief from can actually grant the orders you want. You should seek legal advice which considers your specific circumstances and the outcome you're seeking prior to commencing any action. A good first step in any dispute is raising the issue in writing with the other party. If your issue can be addressed with the park owner under the site agreement and falls within the broad definition of a residential park dispute in the Manufactured Homes Residential Parks Act, you can start the three-step dispute resolution process. If not, the first step is drafting a letter of demand to the other party setting out the issues. You can find more information about the dispute resolution process for manufactured homes in our webinar on this topic, and you can access a self-help kit regarding drafting a letter of demand on Caxton's website. Keep in mind that time limits will apply to some actions, and these may have started running at the time the purchase contract for the manufactured home was entered. Turning next to retirement villages. Some of the issues which might arise include that the information contained in the disclosure documents given to the resident prior to purchasing the right to reside were wrong or misleading. The salesperson made a statement or the marketing material contained a statement about an aspect of the village or your unit which was wrong or misleading or the resident was not told about an important issue about the village which would have affected their decision to purchase the right to reside in the unit. So silence. Again, silence may amount to misleading or deceptive conduct considered against all the other circumstances of the matter. What does the Retirement Villages Act say? Section 86 sets out that a scheme operator or a representative of that operator must not, in the operation of a retirement village scheme, engage in conduct that is misleading or deceptive or is likely to mislead or deceive. There is an example in the Act, so giving of false or misleading information, either orally or in writing, to the chief executive or a resident or prospective resident. In 2017, amendments were made to the Retirement Villages Act. One of those was to change Section 86. Prior to these amendments coming into effect, Section 86 only referred to false and misleading documents. If the conduct in question happened before the amendments, which make it clear that oral or, or written misrepresentations are covered, this previous version of Section 86 will be the applicable law. What this means is if the misleading conduct was verbal, for example, the salesperson said something to you when showing you the village, which turned out not to be true, then Section 86 prior to the amendments may not be appropriate. You should make sure to get legal advice which considers the timing of when you say you were misled to work out which version of this section is relevant to you. Section 170 of the Retirement Villages Act provides that if a resident has been materially prejudiced by a contravention of Section 86, QCAT may set aside the resident's contract. If QCAT decides to set aside the resident's contract, they could also make other orders which accompany this, including about payment of money related to the contract. However, QCAT has previously indicated that it is unable to make orders which do not include setting aside a resident's contract. This means that residents who want to continue living in the village should think carefully about whether this is an appropriate legal option to pursue if they've been misled. What other laws might be relevant for retirement villages? Again, the Australian consumer law may be relevant. 
containing protections against misleading and deceptive conduct or conduct which is likely to mislead or deceive and against unconscionable conduct. The Australian Consumer Law allows consumers to claim for the loss or damage they experience as a result of the breaches of the protections in the Australian Consumer Law. Contract law will also be relevant. Remedies under contract law can include payment of damages, an order that a party do something or stop doing something, and in some cases, undoing the contract, known as rescission. The dispute between Murphy and Overton Investments Proprietary Limited, which the High Court of Australia considered in 2004, confirmed that a failure to disclose relevant information about the reliability of an estimate of the general services charges amounted to misleading and deceptive conduct. This case considered the Trade Practices Act, which is the act which was replaced by the Competition and Consumer Act, which contains the Australian Consumer Law. Then which law is the right law to choose if you have a problem with your retirement village unit? Choosing how to address a problem with your retirement village unit, which involves being misled, may be complicated as one or more laws may be applicable, so you may have to choose. Certain types of actions must be commenced in the Queensland Civil and Administrative Tribunal or QCAT and others should only be commenced in the Magistrates Court of Queensland, Queensland District Court or Queensland Supreme Court. In addition, certain actions in QCAT, including consumer trader disputes, have a limit on the amount of money which can be awarded. Likewise, the Magistrates Court can only award amounts up to a certain value. Given the high price for moving in into retirement villages, it is very important that you commence any action in the right jurisdiction with the appropriate powers. So the court you seek relief from can actually grant the orders you want. You should seek legal advice which considers your specific circumstances prior to commencing any action. A good first step in any dispute is raising the issue in writing with the other party. If your issue can be addressed with the village operator and falls within the broad definition of a retirement village dispute in the Retirement Villages Act, you can start the three-step dispute resolution process. If not, the first step is drafting a letter of demand to the other party, setting up the issues. You can find more information about the dispute resolution process for retirement villages in our webinar on this topic and you can access a self-help kit regarding drafting a letter of demand on Caxton's website. Keep in mind that time limits will apply to some actions and these may have started running at the time the contract was entered. Finally, how to access CurvePass. You can contact our reception on 07 3214 6333 to book an appointment. If you would like advice on behalf of a homeowners committee or an informal group of residents or a residence committee in a retirement village, please tell us when booking as you will also need to get a signed authority from the other members of the group. Thanks for joining me today.